This video is part of the series on a first course in modelling analysis and control and now we're going to give an introduction to first order responses. A previous note demonstrated that a number of common systems can be represented by first order models. So for example the speed of a car has this model here, a spring damper has this model, a resistor capacitor this model, resistor inductor this model and tank level has this model. Next we're going to focus on how these systems behave. Let's look at the speed of a car then. Now when you do a force balance you find out you get a model like this mdvdt plus bv equals f and the key thing we want to, you to look at here is this plus sign. The force is distributed between the acceleration term mdvdt and the friction term bv. So, when V is small, essentially this term is going to be zero. So all the force is going to go to the acceleration term. So that means I'm going to get a steep gradient. So that gradient you can see is dV dt. However, when V is large, so if V is very large, then essentially this term is going to absorb all of the force, so dv dt is going to be small or zero. So we end up with pretty much a zero gradient. Now, as the speed increases, so as the bv term gets bigger, the bv term takes more and more of the f, and so the dv dt gets smaller and smaller. So you see the gradient gradually decreases. So we're going to end up with a curve that starts with maximum gradient and then moves to a zero gradient, a bit like that. Let's look then at a tank level system. So again you'll see the key point here is this plus sign in the differential equation. So the flow is basically distributed between the ADH term, which is the accumulation of the uh, water in the tank, and the KH term, which is basically how much flow goes out through the exit pipe. So when the depth is zero, this KH term disappears, and so essentially the dH dt is going to be a maximum. However, as the depth gets deeper, then obviously the KH term gets bigger, and eventually the KH is going to occupy all of the F in, and the dH dt term will go to zero. So clearly, as the depth increases, the gradient gets gradually less and less and less. So if we do a graph similar to what we had on the previous page, you can see when the depth is small, we have a maximum gradient. When the depth is large, we have a minimum gradient, and the gradient changes with depth. So we're going to end up with a curve somewhat like this. So you can see the gradient gradually gets less and less and less. So here's the interim summary. The first order model response has a shape whereby the gradient starts at a maximum. So here you can see it starts at a maximum gradient and then gradually the gradient gets less and less. And you can see with the red curve we're saying well you can also do the same thing. We've got the steepest here and gradually the gradient goes to zero. So the next question is we might want to be a bit more precise. How quickly do these curves converge to zero gradient. Here you can see I've got a particular time scale, but where's that time scale come from? What is the steady state that they end up at? Okay, how do I know what the steady state is? And can I write an equation with precise dependence on model parameters? So what we're going to do now is do a little MATLAB illustration, if I can make this work. So if I go Here's my MATLAB GUI. Now here, the key thing is we've got two parameters. You can see time constant and gain. What we want you to do is look at how this response, this dark blue curve, changes as I change the time constant. So at the moment, the time constant is three. If I make it smaller, can you see that the re response is converging faster and faster and faster? So as I make this parameter time constant smaller, I converge to the steady state faster and faster and faster. Now, you'll see here I've got a time constant of 1, and if you look at the x-axis at the bottom, can you see where the 1 is? I've got a 1, 
two, three. So these vertical lines are one time constant, two time constant, three time constant. So you can see the convergence rate is linked directly to this time constant. Notice how those vertical lines move, one time constant, two time constant, three time constant, and the decay rate or how fast I converge is linked precisely to these vertical lines. Now, what about this parameter gain? At the moment, I've said the gain is two, and you can see I'm converging to a steady state of two. If I reduce the gain, can you see how the steady state comes down and down and down with the gain? Okay, but the key thing to look at in all these responses is there are some points which are consistent. Okay, so the response always goes through this horizontal line, which says 63%, and this vertical line, which says T. See, it goes through there. It goes through the horizontal line, 86%, and the vertical line, 2T. It goes through the horizontal line, 95%, and the vertical line, 3T. So no, what, no matter what I do with the time constant and the gain, my response always goes through those three points. So that gives you some insight as to what we're looking for. These parameters, time constant and gain, are clearly very significant. So... If we can now find, I think it's there, we go back to our presentation. So, convergence is directly linked to the parameter time constant, and the steady state is directly linked to the parameter steady state gain. So you need to learn how these parameters are defined and the mathematical equations behind the response curves. So let's look then at our generic first order ODE. So here's our generic first order ODE a1 dx dt plus a0 x equals ku. Now for time constant form what we do is we set the coefficient of x of t to be 1. So if you look here you see I've set the coefficient of the x to be 1. And the way I do that for this example is I just divide through by this a0. So then I end up with a t dx dt and a c times u. So this t is the time constant and this C is the steady state gain. And you can see for this example, the numbers are easy. T is A1 over A0 and C is K over A0. So here's an example. Compute the time constant and gain for the following system. So we normalize by dividing through by 40. Why 40? Because the 40 is here on the V and we want to make the coefficient on the V equal to one. So we divide through by 40. You can see I've done that here. So I've got 2.5 over 40, 50 over 40. And so now we can see that this term here has got to be T and this term here has got to be C. So what do we get? We get C is 1 over 16 and T is 1.25. So basically, whenever you're dealing with first order responses, your first move should always be convert the system into time constant form. You should always do that first. Now once we've got it in time constant form, you can see here in the top right there's my time constant form, I can write the solution by inspection. Now I'm not going to derive this, you can do that in your mathematics module and it's relatively straightforward, but the key thing is you can see the solution depends on those core parameters. So the CU term appears here. The time constant T appears here and here, and y of 0 is the initial condition. So the steady state is given by this Cu term, the initial condition there and the time constant there. Now, it's sometimes convenient to rearrange the solution into this form, so basically I put both exponential terms together. You can see there I put both exponential terms together. So now the steady state is clearly the Cu, the dynamic part, the bit that changes because it multiplies by the exponential, has got this y0 minus cu term. So y0 minus cu is the total movement. So y of 0 is where you start and cu is where you finish. So y0 minus cu is basically how far have you moved. So here's an example then. You can see I've given you the differential equation up here and some initial conditions and I've set u equal to 1. Now, if I find the solution, the solution is here. I'm not going to do that slowly. You can do that in your own time. So first of all, you notice the 5 over 4 gives you the steady state. And you can look at the graph and you can see, yes, that is indeed 
the steady state. The x of 0 minus 5 over 4, you can see here, gives you the initial distance from the steady state. So I start from 0 0.5, I finish at 1.25, so the difference between these two is how far I'm moving. And then you can see in green how far am I actually from the steady state as I move with time. You're basically multiplying by this exponential term. So interpreting the generic solution. So we've written the overall solution here, cu plus x to 0 minus cu times e to the minus time over time constant. And we want to say, is there something more we can do? Can we interpret this a bit more precisely? So we're going to recommend look specifically at these time instants. One time constant, two time constant, three time constant. I'm not going to do four time constant because of space, but you should do that in your own time. So. This is what you get. If you put t equals capital T, then this term here is going to become e to the minus 1. And I know the value of that. It's 0 0.37. So essentially, I'm 37% away from steady state after one time constant. If I put 2t in, I get an e to the minus 2, which is 0 0.14. So I'm 14% from steady state after two time constants. And you can see 5% after three time constants. Now, it's quite common you will see people talk about 63% movement, and you might think, well, where's that come from? Where that's come from is this 0 0.37. Okay, so 37% away means that you've currently moved 63%, and people often prefer to talk about how far you've moved rather than how far you've got to go. So again, if you remember, we did this GUI a few minutes ago, and you can see where did the lines come from? 63% is this bit here, and this bit, how far have you got to go, is the 37%. Alternatively, the screen line, there's your 14%, okay, how far you've got to go, or how far have you travelled, 86%, and so on. So let's do an example. Sketch the expected responses for the following system, assuming that u of t is a unit step, that is 1. So first, I put it into time constant form, and so you can see that t is 1 over 3, and k, or capital C, is 2 thirds. Now the curve begins at minus 1, I can see that here, I'm given it, and it finishes at the steady state, which is 2 thirds, so those are two points that I can write down straight away. Then I look at my um, solution, my general solution, so here it is, I've got my cu term, which is 0 0.67, I've got my x of 0 minus cu times e to the minus t over t, and then I just plug in some values. So this is where you do need your calculator. You've just got to put in some numbers. So I calculate after one time constant, and I get 0 0.05. I calculate after three time constants. People don't normally bother with two. And after three time constants, I'm at 0 0.58. So now I just put those numbers in. Where do I start? there's x of 0. Where am I after one time constant? There's x of t. Where am I after three time constants? There's x of 3t. And then you draw, as best as you can, a sketch between the points. So conclu some conclusions. This video has in introduced insights into the behaviour of first order models and the core parameters definitions of time constant and gain. We've also defined the mathematical equation for the response, which can be used to derive, and this is the key thing, once you've got that equation, you can derive the useful insights. Now, we've done this very quickly because this is an introductory video, so please go to the slower resources and more detailed resources and practice because you need to be fluent in moving between first order models and the behaviours interpreting the impact of parameter changes on behaviours, and indeed designing parameters to achieve a specified behaviour. And a reminder as usual, keep up with your quizzes and tutorial sheets and bring your questions to any contact sessions.